Good morning and welcome to my craft desk. Today we're making a new style of envelope and I've made up lots of examples to share with you today to give you some inspiration and they look a little bit like this. So each of these has this diamond shape so you can see they are just a little bit different and on each of them I've added some collage on the front, on this one I added a bird and I've got some beautiful vintage papers and some check paper up here. But what's really great about these is they don't need any sewing or any glue. So they're made from any of your papers. So you can make them from book pages, you can make them from old copy paper or scrapbook paper, really any of your basic supplies. And with seven simple folds to make the back, they don't need any sewing or any glue. So I've made quite a few here as you can see and I made so many because they're very quick to make and you can get carried away. This one has a floral design and I've got some beautiful washi tape up here. I went for the teals on this one for something different. I've got a little squirrel on the front. This is a book page that you can see I've made it from and I've got some vintage designs, some toadstools and some florals. These are just book pages, florals from book pages here. I have as usual a set of process steps which I will refer to as we go through and with that said let's get on and make some really different envelope pouches. I'm going to start by making one of these little envelope pouches with a piece of paper that is the perfect shape for it. But when I've made one, and it really is very, very easy, we'll go through it step by step so that you can definitely do it too. I'll make one from a piece of paper that is not the perfect size, which means that you can then use any book page you want or any shape as a starting point and really make the best of the supplies that you have. So let's take a look at the little process steps that are put together. Select a book page or a piece of copy paper and it needs to be rectangular in size. So I'm going to start with a piece of A4 paper which is 29.7 centimetres in this direction and it is 21 centimetres in this direction. So if I turned it that way that would be almost 30 centimetres in what I would say is height and 21 centimetres in width. And that is what we call the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the ratio of one side to another. And it's this aspect ratio and a magic number that I'm going to share today that will make these little envelope pouches come together in no time at all. And once you've got it, you'll be hooked. So the aspect ratio that I'm working with is 1.41. That's our magic number. So my height here is 1.41 times the width. But as I say, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do this starting with any size and shape of book page so that you can use what you have. And you'll see me trim it down to size so that you can make these two. So it doesn't need to be exactly that ratio, but what we need is for this long side to be at least 1.41 times the width of the piece of paper. And that's all we need to begin with. So let's have a go at making the folds. And that really is very easy. I'll clear this away and we'll have a go at that. So I have my piece of A4 paper and I'm now going to make five folds in this piece of paper and begin by folding it in half lengthways. So I'm going to fold it right down the middle here and for today's project, first of all this copy paper that I'm using is just something that had some print on it and I don't want to use that anymore but I don't want to just throw the paper away. So it's copy paper that is quite thin, I think it's about 80 GSM. I want to fold some corners down to meet the crease that I've just made down the middle. Let me show you that. So I've folded it in half and I think I'll keep the type on the inside here 
because that way I won't see it. I'm going to take this top left hand corner and fold it in to meet the crease down the middle. So let me do that with this top left hand corner. Take this corner and fold it in and be quite precise with this project. It helps if you have something to squidge down the paper to make that crease really tight. But don't take this point any further over than the fold. We can just see whether we've been accurate in our fold. Yes, that folds over nicely. I haven't folded too far down. So I've done the top left. I'm going to turn it all the way around and do this corner down here. Turn it round. Just going to do exactly the same. Nothing hard about this so far is the so being as neat as a possible, possibly can just fold that to the centre and I'll crease that down. So what I've got is a piece of paper with a fold at the top and a fold at the bottom. And I'm going to take each of these sides now and fold them into the middle and again crease them down nice and crisply. So where shall I start? Let's take this long side and fold it in again to the middle being as accurate as you can be. There's a, there is something about precision with this that helps. I'm also going to give you some tips later for making this work more often because I've done a lot of practicing and learned a few things along the way. So I've got some tips to share. All I'm doing is working on the other side and folding that side in. And this means we've already done four folds. And I'll show you what we've done. Should we just open it up? So we folded the whole piece of paper down the middle here. And then we took each corner, top left, bottom right, and folded those in. And then we folded the left hand side and we've folded the right hand side. So on our instructions, we've cruised through step two. So now what we're going to do is do some tucking underneath using some of the folds that we've created. I'll show you what to do. So I want to take this bottom right hand corner and I'm going to bring it up here. And I'm going to rotate it around the top of this triangle here. So I'm going to take this bottom right hand corner, I'm going to fold that up and I'm going to go as far as this edge. I'm going to go as far as this edge here, no further but on it. If anything, a little bit, a millimetre less than the edge of the paper and I've folded from the top of that pyramid. I'll show you. Let's just crease that down. I'll show you exactly what I've done. So I took this bottom right hand corner and I have folded from the little tip here of this triangle that we made. So I take this and I fold it up and I'm going to bring it back lift up this side that we'd created, tuck that in and fold that back down. There we go, snug as a bug in a rug. And you can see why, good to explain why we do some of these folds. If I just open it up, if I'd folded this piece and made it tuck over, let me show you, if when I'd folded this, I'd made it come further over here, then it wouldn't sit snugly under this flap when I lift this up and put it down. I'm going to do that and it does fit neatly. And all I'm going to do is rotate it and do exactly the same again. So from the peak of this triangle here, I'm going to make a fold, fold it in, 
to take this corner up to here. So just take my paper, fold it up here and you'll see at this point that there's a limiting factor. There's a piece of paper here, the first fold, which we want to be aware of and as I fold this piece up I want this line here, the left hand edge of my fold, to just touch but not overlap that piece that we'd folded in. So let me show you. We've created a fold up here and this is going to tuck underneath the same as the first corner and in order to do that I will lift this, take my right hand corner, just tuck that underneath and it will fit neatly as long as this piece here isn't further over here and we were aware of that when we were making the fold so everything tucks in neatly and that gives us our little envelope pouch. When I started making these little envelope pouches I was a little bit confused why some size paper worked in the folding and some didn't and by that I mean when I made the folds to make all of these tucks at the back I ended up with some of these flaps being just too big to tuck in. So how big is too big and what sort of shape paper will work for this and if I don't start with the right shape of paper then what can I do about it? So let's go back to that word aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio is important and the height needs to be, let's just draw on here, the height needs to be 1.41 times the width. So if I have a piece of paper, my height here needs to be, and that's my width, my height divided by my width needs to be at least this magic number of 1.41. And I could bore you and say that 1.41 is the square root of two, which is something to do with the size of paper that we tend to use in the UK. But you don't need to know anything about all of these numbers really. We just need to know that when we look at a book page, and let's take an example, Let's say we have this book page. It looks quite wide, doesn't it, relative to height? So I would say, even by eye, I think this is a fairly wide sheet and was probably too wide for our needs. What I can do is measure the height. So let's see what we've got. We've got 28 centimetres. Is my height and I would take that number, I would divide it by 1.41 and that is the maximum width that I can have over here. And that's exactly what I did to create this envelope pouch. So I took the width that I'd calculated and trimmed some off and then just had a piece of paper that worked. Why don't we just un unwrap this so I can show you how much that was. So I started with a book page that was this size. I trimmed off enough, some on either side, so that I ended up with a piece that you can see proportionately is now fairly tall relative to the width. We obviously can't make a piece of paper bigger than it already is, so the only thing we can do is make it not as wide. So going back to the instructions, we want the height of the piece of paper to be at least 1.41 times the width. So you can just use your trimmer to take it down, and that means you can use any book page you like. So I had to go with some other book pages and some of these, if you look at, they are quite tall relative to the width. So they are 
a bit more than 1.41 times the width, but that's okay. You, they don't need to be absolutely perfect. Let me show you an example of one where I used a piece of paper that was indeed a bit more stretched out that way than that way. We just end up with a little bit more of a, of a gap here under one of the flaps, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really have, mean that we have a problem for our little envelope pouch. So you can make them from any paper. I made them from various dictionary pages. I made them from a very old phone book. And that means we can make lots and lots. Once you get going, you'll have so much fun. Shall we have a go at adding just a little bit of collage? Something like this, or maybe something like this. For the collage on these, you can literally add anything. And I've stamped and painted some. I've added my music paper on this one. I've added a little squirrel. I've splattered with paint and added mica. I've used Amazon packing paper that I've added some gold paint on. I've got washi tape down here. Just all sorts, whatever you have. I think it works really well with, a, with a, an eclectic combination seems to be perfect. I like to start with a book page. And this is one that's just slightly off white actually because I've started with copy paper and I'd like to take that down. And what I'm going to do is cover a substantial amount of this front to begin with, with a book page. And one of the tips I have is to put your book page on or any of your little pieces of collage and keep trimming around. I think this is slightly harder to visualise the shape when you've got pieces of paper jutting out. So let's just put that on in the middle so it covers up a substantial amount of it. As you can see, it's not covering up all of the corners, but that's okay. And I'll turn it over and just use, the glue is still wet, use the words and the letters to help me line it up a bit more accurately and then press that down. And then I'm going to go in with a pair of scissors and trim off the excess straight away. And this way I can be seeing where the edge of the envelope pouch is. And my tip as well, because of course I've got this wrong myself, is just be really careful when you're trimming with this because it's easy to just, with your scissors, nick the edge of the envelope pouch and make a hole in it. So just trim that off. You could probably tear it too. Take that down. And instantly we'll have transformation of this. And I'm ready to go with whatever items I like. Now I have added some extra acrylic gold, yum yum, to my paper. I think no formula here. I just very quickly will add some little pieces to the front here, just to give you an example of the sorts of things you might want to do. Of course, you will have your own ideas and you'll have your own supplies and it will, it will always look different and beautiful. Washi tape, it's lovely, isn't it? Beautiful vintage style. I'm not really thinking too much about what I'm doing either. I'm just going to do a bit of layering, why not? I've got washi tape on my desk from the washi tape shop and from Stationery Pal. They've very kindly sent me some to play with and I am increasingly addicted. I get to the point where I can't quite remember which piece is from where. I'll be honest, my brain isn't that sharp these days. However, I know that I love it. Like I say, not too much thinking. Maybe we can have, have a bit of a, a rummage. Let's have a rummage in, in here. What have we got? Some lovely bits of paper. Right, so I've got browns, gold and green. You can see, ooh, a lovely piece of paper there. That was clearly waiting for me. Just fill in the corner. Isn't it sad that sometimes we've got to use that side and never see it again? And it's just as beautiful as the side on, on the front. Maybe take a bit of that off. 
and I'm increasingly into a bit of a vintage, a vintage vibe. So I thought today I would use an image from a book page. So I'm going to just probably tear out one of these little flowers. In fact, I've been using those to make some vintage collage strips. Oops, vintage collage strips, which I thought I might make if you're interested. Shall I just show you? So I've been having a go at some adapted collage strips on book page backed papers here in some lovely vintage colours. And these are from the same page, you can see the same design. So that's from a lovely book. The book's called Wild Flowers, a field guide in colour to wild flowers. And there is a plethora of pages in here and they're really easy to tear out. I thought I'd use one of these today on the front of here. I thought it goes really well. So how about something down here? Might be greedy and use two. Let's take that out and see what it looks like. And all of the bits that I tear off go in my basket and they get used for bits of collage on the front of another envelope too. Is that too big? Yes, it is. Let's just quickly tear that down. Not only is it faster than cutting, but it's deeply rewarding and very satisfying to come out with something like that, which can go on there, on top of my little bit of music paper and my green spotty paper. Looks perfect to me. I feel I just need a little bit of something at the top, maybe something like that. And I know that I want to add one more piece of washi. add glue behind here to make sure it's sealed down at the edges and I could splot this with a little bit of paint I could just add a little bit extra if I wanted I like the sentiment there if you've enjoyed these envelope pouches then check out my video where I make these simple pockets from book pages I think you'd really enjoy that too hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and I hope to see you soon